Once again, welcome to the Money Code Secrets. Now in this episode, we talk about how to become wealthy and work that produces true wealth. Let's continue. So how does one become wealthy? Great question. The answer is found in the sacred ancient Jewish text, the Talmud. Let him engage much in business and deal honestly. Nida 70b. Now the Talmud is a book of Jewish law that is one of the most important sacred ancient texts in the world. And it contains a Jewish code of wealth. And studying the Talmud can reveal many, many secrets in how to become wealthy. Proverbs 12.24 of the ISV says, The diligent will take control, but the lazy will be put to forced labor. Now, laziness in this specific verse doesn't mean a laziness to work. It clearly states that the lazy will have to work, but they will be put to forced labor. Hmm, what is forced labor? Now, many people work at jobs they hate. Doesn't this imply that they have been put to forced labor simply to earn an income? If you hate your work, then you have been put into forced labor. You are not using your mind to strategize and take control, but rather your employer is giving you labor you must do to earn an income. Now the English Revised Version provides a, the same message of Proverbs 12.24. It says, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be put under task work. Laziness in this Bible verse implies being lazy in your mind. Now the majority of jobs are task work. The non-verbally work arrangement is like so... Uh, Complete this task. Now, complete that task. And then I'll give you a paycheck for your time and your completed task work. Now, what does the Bible verse say about the diligent? It says they will take control. In other words, the diligent will take control over all the decisions in their work, in their life, and no one needs to tell them what to do. They employ their sharp thinking ability and their creativity to earn an income. Now, a good example of work that involves diligent use of your mind is owning a business or making wise investments. However, there are also certain high paying careers that allow you to make the majority of the decisions on your own time and employ your creativity and your thinking ability. Now, you may not completely enjoy the work, but you feel in control. And this in itself is a self-satisfying feeling. Believe me, it is. There is a difference between a career and a job. A job is something that is given to you and doesn't allow much room for advancement and growth. Whereas a career is something that is created by you and allows plenty of room for advancement and for growth. Working at a job you don't enjoy causes you to feel dependent on your employer for an income, a raise, and leaves you feeling just unsatisfied. Now, working in a career causes you to feel in control and satisfied. It allows you to make the majority of the decisions and enables you to earn a high income if you make the right decisions. Therefore, I hope you can come to understand that business, investing, or any high paying career that allows you to take control is suitable for becoming wealthy. Now, most people have a lazy state of mind. Most people with jobs don't have the mental fitness required to strategize and figure out how to work at something they enjoy and earn a high income from it. That's true. You see, it requires diligent strategizing, planning, creativity, thinking ability, problem-solving skills, and confidence in oneself to become wealthy. For many people, 
it's much easier to just skip all this mental hard work and get a job just to earn an income. As a result, many people who have jobs are scared to engage in a business or believe business is risky. People with jobs may have a hard time coming up with a successful business ideas. Or they dabble a little in a business, but they don't put in the mental hard work to make it a success. Now the Talmud states, let him engage much in business and deal honestly. It doesn't say engage a little in business. The Talmud says engage much in business. Engaging much in business involves plenty of work on your part and or on the part of the employees that you then hire. The second part of the message in the Talmud is to deal honestly. Now consider this. Many people may work hard at something that produces massive wealth for themselves. But if they deal dishonestly, they eventually lose it all or die an untimely death. How devastating it would be to create millions, but then lose it all because of dishonesty. Wouldn't it be much wiser to create wealth, honestly? and then enjoy your wealth for the rest of your life. Speaking about wisdom and prudence, Proverbs 8.18 of the New English Translation says that possessing these two qualities will produce long-lasting wealth. Not just for a few years, but wealth that lasts for the rest of your life. By now, you understand uh, the importance of engaging in much business and dealing honestly. However, this message in the Talmud doesn't explain what business or career that you must personally engage in to become wealthy. Doesn't help us there. Now, the reason for this is simple. What you must do to become wealthy is different than someone else. What works for one person to uh, create wealth may not work for you. What works for you to become wealthy may not work at all for someone else. Just like every person in the world has a completely uh, different and <laughs> unique fingerprint. And no one has the exact same fingerprint that you have. The same applies to a career in business. Your purpose on this earth is to figure out your own unique way to earn plenty of money. So how do you find your own unique way to become truly wealthy? Proverbs 8.12 of the King James Bible says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. <laughs> I like that. Webster's Bible translation of the same verse says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of ingenious inventions. Proverbs 8.12 says, ingenious inventions and witty invention. These are interesting words, aren't they? Now the definition for witty and ingenious inventions means to think of unique and clever ideas. Now when these words are applied to an idea, they mean to cleverly and originally devise something or a particular purpose for a particular purpose. This Bible verse is saying that you will come up with inventions and ideas and strategies on how to become wealthy once you acquire wisdom, knowledge, and use prudent thinking. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4 of the NLT says, A house is built by wisdom and become strong through good sense, through knowledge. Its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. This analogy perfectly explains that just like a house is built with wisdom and through knowledge, the rooms are then filled with riches. A person with wisdom will build wealth. Now, Proverbs 24.5 of the World English Bible says, A wise man has great power. Wisdom gives you the power to accomplish great things in your lifetime. 
one of the wisest actions you can take is to test and measure any idea that you come up with. When you test or you measure something, you get important feedback and great information. When you weigh yourself on a scale, you find out how much you weigh. You don't know how much you weigh unless you weigh yourself. Now, there are more advanced smart digital scales that tell you not only your weight, but also your body fat levels, your water percentage, your muscle mass, your bone mass, and much more. When testing and measuring the human mind and body, there is a technology that is called biofeedback. You've probably heard that term. During biofeedback, you're connected to uh, electrical sensors that help you receive feedback and information about your body. There are numerous biofeedback devices that you may already know about. Electromyograph, electrodermograph, electroencephalograph, and electrocardiograph are among the most well-known. Now, over the years, biofeedback as a discipline and a technology has continued to develop and advance. Biofeedback is based on the fact that a wide variety of ongoing intrinsic natural functions of the organism occur at a level of awareness generally called the unconscious or the subconscious. The biofeedback process is designed to interface with select aspects of these unconscious or subconscious processes. Now, many of these biofeedback devices, they detect disease. The electrocardiogram, also called an EKG or ECG, is used by cardiologists and doctors to check for signs of heart disease. Electroencephalography, EEG, is an electrophysiological monetary method to record electrical activity of the brain. EEG is most often used to diagnose epilepsy. EEG can also diagnose tumors, stroke, and other focal brain disorders. Now, many people are still not in the know, but there are powerful technologies and measuring devices that will provide information about the body, the mind, and the potential of each person. It's incredible. Neurofeedback uses advanced computer technology for measuring brain waves and providing feedback. All forms of neurofeedback use software and technological devices to collect information about the brain and then work to train the brain, train the brain to achieve a more balanced and optimized state. Brain training can help you transform thinking, feeling, and behavior patterns by self-regulating brain function. It's amazing. Quantum biofeedback is the most highly technologically advanced system for measuring and thereby testing the body and the mind. All forms of biofeedback provide Feedback, that's information, just like a mirror. When you look into a mirror, you receive visual feedback. When you look at yourself, you can make a, some appropriate self-adjustments. Now, when you use biofeedback, your body and your mind can make proper self-adjustments based on the feedback that is provided. In the next episode, we will discuss how to properly use these highly advanced technologies to gather information and then test and measure your probabilities for succeeding in specific ventures. And you can use methods other than the technologies mentioned to uh, gather, gather information and receive feedback. All forms of research require the scientific process of collecting data and analyzing the data in an unbiased manner so as to provide accurate information that reflects the true and current state of affairs in life and body. 
Marketing research techniques come in many types and in many methods, but all essentially work to provide important feedback and information. Daniel Starch developed measures for testing advertising copy effectiveness in print media, and these subsequently became known as starch scores. And you know what? They're still used today. In the 1930s and 40s, many of the data collection methods, probability sampling methods, uh, survey methods, questionnaire design, and key metrics were developed. Now, whatever method you use, make sure to test and measure your ideas and strategies before taking massive action. Because as Proverbs 19.2 says, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Hey, please subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel.